worse than death. He's going to put me on punishment for the rest of my life. <laughs> Come on, if, if he would have known, he would have yelled at you last night about it. Yeah, but we pretended like we were asleep, remember? Uh, I know my dad. He likes to make me think about what I've done before he lowers the boom. Oh, not my parents. Man, if they even thought I was doing something wrong, they'd lower the boom, bam, loud and clear. Mostly loud. Yeah, well, at least it's better than this slow torture. How do you even know that Jilly told him that she saw us? I know she told him. He's gonna kill us. In front of a witness? <laughs> Sleep much. You worried about Francesca? Yeah, and that phone call from her father. Why Roger just happened to drop his name on me. You look awful. You want some coffee? No, thanks. I'm already wired. Mallet, you have to tell me what you're planning to do to Roger. Why? So you can warn him? That's not fair. You don't trust me by now? Well, that depends. I want you told him yesterday when he was here. I didn't tell him anything, I swear. Oh no. Not, a, not even a little hint that he could be in trouble. What's the matter with you? What are you so afraid of? Don't you get it? If Roger knows enough to tell the thing who I am, then I can lose Francesca forever. And I'll be a dead man. Just a minute. Come in. Okay, Monsieur. As soon as I got your message, what's up? Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, this is Thorpe. Oh, Mr. Bernard, thanks for getting back to me so quickly. That's right, Melinda Lewis Design. Right. Okay. Uh, you'll let me know what she says. Thank you. Something's wrong. Yes. It's Alexandra. She knows. Alexandra knows how much. I'm not sure. But she flunked her little test last night. She's definitely onto something. Mindy? Probably. Although if that were all she knew, she'd have thrown me into the street by now. So I suspect she knows something about the missing funds. Why? She's playing too cool. She knows her company's at risk. Damn! No, 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 no. Relax. Whatever she has, she doesn't have proof yet. We just have to work fast. That's what that phone call was about. I'm taking care of Mindy and her future. I'll need you to draw up the divorce petition right away, and I've got to make arrangements for my son and daughter. Uh, Blake could be dangerous if she finds out what we've done. Oh, no, I can handle Blake. Roger, how could your wife have found out? It doesn't matter now. The important thing is we have got to shred every last piece of paper and erase every file on that computer and close up shop. We haven't finished what we started yet. John, it's not the first time that we've had to abort a mission. Stop looking so glum. We tie up these loose ends, we're home free, my friend. Mm, you're home free. You didn't take the chances I took. Your fingerprints won't be found anywhere. I want to know what Alexandra knows and who's helping her. It doesn't matter. All that matters is we get out quickly before she has proof. I'll get the rest of the money out of the foundation computer. No, no, it's too dangerous. There's still a lot of money left in there, Roger. We made a deal. Oh, so we wind up with a little less. Come on, we're still loaded, John. I'm not going to take the chance of getting caught and because we got greedy. I'm not going to do that to my children. Your children are adults. They can take care of themselves. I want all the money that was promised me. Forget it, John! 
John, all the money in the world isn't going to do you a bit of good if you are in jail. What about Pizzini? We still have to pay him off. He'll have us cut to ribbons if we renege on the money we owe him. I don't think so. I've got something he wants more than money. And I'm flying to New York tonight to tell him. Tell him what? That the man he's looking for, Tony Camaletti, is living right here in Springfield as A.C. Mallet. Listen, Roger did not say anything about Fatimi after you left. You heard everything he had to say about the man. You know, I gotta know what he's up to with Francesca's father. What makes you think that Roger's up to something? Because I know Roger, and I know Vizzini. Roger was baiting me. I think he knows who I am. Well, I swear, he didn't say anything about it to me. He came to talk to me about something else. Oh, yeah? I hope you're not buying into whatever he's selling. Look, I wish I could help you more, but... I just don't know anything. Okay. Just promise me you'll be careful, all right? Yes. How do you do? I'm George Bernard, Lilac sure. Fashion, Chicago. Sure. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. Um, what can I do for you? Hey, partner. I, uh, I've been looking for you. I mean, I'll let you get back to Thanks. business. Frankie, mm -hmm. just a man I need to talk to. Sorry I didn't call for an appointment, but I had a brief play over here in Springfield, so I thought I'd take a chance. Well, I'm glad you did. Uh, can I get you some coffee? No, thank you. I'll get right to business. Okay. My wife saw some of your designs last week at a fashion show, and she hasn't stopped talking about them. There were three in particular. Really? Um, let me get my portfolio, and you can tell me if you're right. Okay. Here we go. This one. This. Mm -hmm. And this. Now... I'd like to buy these dresses for my company to manufacture. Do you have samples? Well, I can have them made up for you right away. How soon do you need them? As soon as possible. I want to get them on the market before the fall line, and I have stores all over the country to put them in. Great. All over the country. <laughs> That's right. I plan to make a great deal of money from these dresses, Miss Lewis. Great. Um, of course, we need to discuss the terms of payment. Oh, I think we can handle that right now. I believe in rewarding talent when I see it, and uh, I always pay cash up front. Name your price. I didn't know what time Bridget had to be back, you know? Oh, I don't have to get in any particular time. Mm. Okay. Well, you guys just go back to sleep, all right? Okay. See you later. Bye. I don't get it. He's not even mad. Well, maybe he's waiting until I leave. No, that's not like my dad. If he was upset, he would have told me right away. Do you think maybe he doesn't know? I don't know, I mean, but why wouldn't have Julie told him? I bet she's trying to kiss up to you. You know, to score some brownie points. You know, you're probably right. But two can play that game. You know what? I think you should be even nicer to her. What do you mean? Because it takes away all her ammunition. If you're nice to her, then when she knifes you in the back, and we know that she will, that'll turn on her. I got it. Oh, hey, baby. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Ladies, ladies, look who's here. industrious today. Well, had to be done sometime. Well, looks like you've been doing this for quite some time. What time did you get up this morning? Oh, I don't know, 6, 6.30. I was kind of hoping you'd wait up for me last night. Well, I did, but you were a little later than I expected. 
unexpected. I know. I'm sorry. Something, something came up I had to take care of. Apparently. You upset about something? Should I be? I don't know. You're, uh... Something is obviously bothering you. Can you tell me what it is? Not really. I mean, come on, what's wrong? It's just... I wish you would be honest with me, Ed. About what? done something? I mean, come on, honest about what? Well, I can see you're gonna make me be the one to say it. Come in. Hi. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. morning considering you were here so late last night well i'm just polishing my presentation i'm pitching phase two to dad again tell me what you think <sighs> it's very nice blake i'm very impressed you think he'll be this is our last chance to convince him to go on with phase two it's very important to you isn't it well i'm just proud of you you know that, especially now that Hart's back in his life. He has his long-lost son. Do you really think that Hart is trying to take your place with Roger? Well, it doesn't matter because it's not going to happen. With this project, I'm going to prove how much I'm worth to my dad. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> should you really attach so much importance to it, is what I'm saying. What are you talking about? This project used to be just as important to you, too. Why aren't you excited about this pitch? Why aren't you sweating it out with me? Hello. Good morning. Ah, good morning, Dad. Alan Michael, Blake. Hi. Mm. I just got a message that you were looking for me. Yes, and your timing is perfect. Perfect for what? I want to discuss phase two of the Neuro Robotics Project. Now, I know that you wanted to put it on hold, but I'm about to change your mind, so I'll get you some coffee. Honey, I don't have a whole lot of time. No, I know you're very busy. But I'm sure that you could spare at least half an hour for your only daughter. Of course. Now, as you know, Phase One was an amazing success at Cedars. And national coverage has been tremendous. Therefore, I think it's very important that we don't lose this momentum. So, if you'll just look on page four. You want to tell me why we're coming to a park to talk? Could be bugged. I can't take any chances. Bug? Do you know uh, who, who would do something like that? Yeah, I do. Parker, what's going on here? I mean, is this about this guy that you've been running from? Yeah. And the heat is on. I want you to be warned. The office could be a dangerous place. And you could be in danger, too. Well, thanks for the warning, but I mean, who am I supposed to look out for? I mean, what do I expect? Look, the more I tell you, the more jeopardy you're in. Just, just watch your back, all right? Dangerous are we talking about? Very. These guys are heavy hitters, Frank. So why don't you give me the details and let me worry about the danger? Look, I'm telling you, it's better yeah. off if you And I'm telling you that we're talking about my back. Now, I want to be prepared. Would you please just fill me in? All right, let's walk. Now, you remember that girl, the one I thought was dead all this time? Yeah. Well, I found her, and she's connected to some bad people. What, this guy that you've been running from? Yeah. He'd kill me in a second if he could find me. So, I've come up with a plan. Sorry to barge in on you like this. No, oh, it's uh, no problem. So, what brings you over here today? Well, I, um, I didn't want you to get the wrong impression about last night. About what? Daniel. I mean, he was off duty, but he was screening the calls in his answering machine. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure that he had gotten the Lynn's message, that's all. I... Well, he did. Okay. So, there was really any, no need for you to come over to his apartment and uh, tell him about the surgery rotation. I mean, he's got to be trustworthy, right? He's a doctor. <laughs> it's just that he, he felt that you were checking up on him and that you're worried about him doing his job. I'm sorry Daniel feels that way. 
but surely you didn't come over here just uh, to defend his honor. Must be something else you want to know. We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. had a few hours off, and I thought I'd do a little shopping over that new bakery on 10th Street. A little shopping? Mm-hmm. You're gonna spoil me, girl. Don't reach over that brand. No, I want that this one. piece right here, okay? Mmm. <laughs> Ladies, you better come on in here and grab some of these goodies, because they're gonna be gone. You see? She feeds them pure sugar. Thanks, uh, Mr. Spigas. It sounds great. We'll be there in a second. Would you be nice Be to nice her? to her and say what? I don't know. Please. Compliment her hairdo or something. Come on. Come on. Oh, these look great. Mm -hmm. What are they? Oh, this one's good. Yeah? Yeah. Jilly, your hair looks really pretty today. Why, thank you, Pat. <laughs> and that suit, I love the suit. I love the color. It looks really great on you. Daddy, don't you think Jilly looks good today? She looks terrific. She always does. She can't help it. Bridget, don't you think Jilly looks absolutely beautiful? Mm, definitely. Well, thanks again. Pam, could I um, talk to you for a bit in private? Sure. Do um, you want to take a walk? Yes. Oh, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go by the little cafe and grab some espresso? Okay, sounds good. All right, baby, you want us to bring you anything? Oh, no, thanks. All right, we'll Bye. see you later. Yeah. Don't eat them all. <laughs> take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Great. I hope you have a plan B, because plan A sure didn't work. Being nice to her is not going to cut it. But, Kat, she didn't tell your father that you went out last night if you were grounded. Did yes, you? but why does she want to go and talk to him alone? I don't know, but, you know, even if she does tell him, that's okay. Because you can just blame it all on me. Bridget, I can't do that. That's not fair. It was my idea. Yeah, but I'm going to feel like a goody-goody. That's okay. <laughs> we need that. We can use that. Someone needs that image. But, Bridget, you're going to get in trouble for it. I don't care. Grumps don't like me. Oh, I need a cigarette. <laughs> and I need to know why Jilly wants to talk to my father alone. Well, there is one way to find out. Follow them. <laughs> I'll check back with you to see when you can deliver those samples. Oh, I will call you as soon as they're ready, Mr. Bernard. Fine. I look forward to seeing your next collection, Miss Lewis. I'm sure I'll be able to use some of the designs. I certainly hope so. Oh, you can count on it. I expect great things of you, you know. You do? Absolutely. Well, I better head for the airport. Don't want to miss that plane. Okay. Sorry, I thought you'd be finished with business. Um, that's okay. Mr. Bernard is just leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you again. Jack, he just bought three of my dresses and he's putting them in shops all over the country. Well. Isn't this amazing? Just from his wife seeing my dresses and liking them at the fashion show. I can't believe this is finally happening. Well, if you admit you knew you could do it. <sighs> Thanks, but, um, what about you? Are you going to be okay? I can wrap this case up fast enough, yeah. I know, every day you're in Springfield, it's you and Francesca and are in danger. Why don't you just forget about the case and just go? little matter of finances, I gotta finish what I started. But in the meantime, I came to warn you, there could be trouble after I'm gone. For me, why? Oh, because you mean because I helped you and Francesca get together? Yeah, I should have never let you get involved. You couldn't have stopped me, I wanted to help. Yeah, and you were terrific too. But as of now, you're out of it. If anything happens, I want you to go to Frank, right? He knows what's going on and he'll protect you. What do you mean I'm out of it? I mean, you're out of it. As of now, I don't want you helping us anymore. I can't put you in any more danger. I mean, come on, there must be something else. So why don't you stop beating around the bush and tell me what it is? You know me too well. Ah, uh, okay, this is difficult, but, um... Well, all right. You must know a lot about Daniel's background from the resumes and the personnel records, and I'm just wondering if there is anything in his past you think I should know about. Why are you asking this? 
Because the other night he became very distraught about something. I'd never seen him upset like that. And he wouldn't talk about it. And I connected this with something that I found out when I was doing his bio for the documentary. There was this gap of time in his medical school records with no explanation. I know about that, yeah. Oh. And you hired him. Well, it's okay then, right? I mean, it can't be too important. Well, except that the reason I hired him was basically that Justin Marler pretty much staked his career on him, and I figured that Justin wouldn't do that if he weren't absolutely convinced of Daniel's qualifications, so... Oh. So you don't know what happened when he dropped out? No, I don't. But if I find out anything that I think you should know about, I promise I'll tell you. You better. Huh. Thanks. How's Blake? It's all right, I think. My daughter and I have not been seeing a lot of each other. Is that because she's working too hard or you're working too hard? Well, I've been spending a lot of time with Daniel. And um, I don't know. I guess you're right. Maybe she is working too hard. I just don't think she knows how to have any fun in her life. You worried about her? Well, I'm, I worry more about us. I mean, you know I really wanted her to move in with me, but um, the closer I try to get to her, the more she pulls away from me. And she's constantly accusing me of attacking Roger. Well, watch, don't get trapped between those two. I'm not afraid of Roger. But he better not hurt my daughter. He doesn't know the kind of rat. I don't know what I'm gonna do. What? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't have anything to wear. What do you mean, what about all those clothes that I bought you? They're all in the laundry. I've already worn them all once. I never wore the same socks from yesterday. Uh, oh, oh, um, here, why don't you take this and go downtown and get yourself something. Thanks, don't worry, you're yourself. welcome, you're welcome, go on, go. So obsessive about Roger's attention. Baby, you hadn't said two words since we left the coffee shop, and I thought you wanted to talk to me about something. I did. I, I do. I just don't know quite how to begin. Well, they'll take it from the top. What's it about? About you? Your job? Me? You, you and me? What? It's about Kat. Honey, it's just not working. It's not working? I thought you two were finally getting along. <laughs> I know that's what you thought, it's what I let you think, but you're wrong. I, I think when it when it comes to your little girl, you're just a bit blind. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, I'm, okay, let, let me try and get this out, all right? I try with her. I know you try with her, but it's like nothing we're saying to her gets through. It's, it's like she's holding us hostage with that attitude of hers. Oh, come on, she's just a kid. No, I am. It's just a few years difference between us. I, she's practically an adult. Now, I don't think you're helping her grow up by treating her like a little girl. You think I'm spoiling her, don't you? Jilly, I missed all those years when she was growing up. And now, I, well, I only, got her, I only have her with me for a little while, you know? Hey, I know. I know. All I'm saying is that when I was her age, my parents didn't let me get away with things. Mm. I mean, I, that's what I needed. That's what she needs. Teenagers need to know discipline. They need to know their boundaries. Well, she's got boundaries. I just grounded her, didn't I? Honey, wake up. If you don't, your daughter might be headed for a lot of trouble. Well, look, that's enough for this. Since when did you become the expert in child psychology here? No, wait a minute. That's not what I'm saying. Honey, all I'm trying to say is that... You can't expect me to just sit back and watch what she's doing to our relationship and not say anything. Well, all I'm saying is that if you understood a little better what she's going through, then you and I wouldn't have a wait, problem. Wait yet. a minute, honey. Are you, am I hearing you right? You're making it sound like I'm being very unreasonable about this, and I know I've been more than reasonable. Now, I need something to change in this relationship. It's got to change her. Or what? What are you doing here? Are you following us? Davis, 
here. I don't care about the Jessops. The interstate highway is going through there regardless. Well, if it's in the way, move it. Don't worry about the consent forms. They're in the works. Just get on it and get it done. This wasn't in here yesterday. Someone's been in here. analysis the public will be clamoring to know about every step of the project and we'll keep them informed therefore Spalding Enterprises should figure prominently in the news for a long time to come I must say I am very impressed so am I Blake nice job thank you well dad can we go on to phase two well I I'm definitely going to have to give it some new thought. That's all? Roger, uh, don't you think that we we deserve a little bit more than this? I mean, if for nothing else, the fact that Blake worked so hard on it and she did a tremendous job. I agree. She did a splendid job. Honey, I don't want you to be disappointed. Things are going to work out. Blake, if you'll, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm... Some other things that I need to take care of. Roger. Alan Michael. Things will work out. What does that mean? They may not work out exactly the way you planned, but they will work out now. You have I don't to trust believe me. this. Everything I've done has been to prove myself to you, and you don't even care. If Hart came in here and gave half as good a presentation, you'd be falling that is all over not him. True. I am very impressed with what you've done. But it's not enough. I'll never be a Honey, I am so proud of you. Listen, I have a very good idea. I have to go to New York tonight on business. How about coming with me? Why? So I can babysit Hart while you're at your meetings? Mm -mm. Just be the two of us. Really? Just me and you? Just me and you. <laughs> Why not? We haven't had a chance to spend much time together recently. I want you to come. Please. I've got one meeting. The rest of the time, you and I are going to play. I mean, we're going to hit the streets. We're going to have a little fun. We'll <laughs> Huh? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Now, you just do what you have to do. Pack a bag, okay. and I'll pick you up tonight, seven shots. Yes, I'll be ready. Okay. <laughs> That's such a good idea, either. Why? Because there are a lot of unanswered questions about that man. Well, Holly's a big girl. I'm sure she can take care of herself. I'm not. I've known her a long time. She's misjudged people before. I mean, Roger's the perfect example. Oh, right, 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 right. Roger. I know how you feel about Holly, and I'm not sure that we should even be discussing this. But I don't think that Daniel is the right man for her. Then who is, Ed? Are you saving Holly for somebody? And then I went down to that, to that store where they sell all those old magazines and, and I was looking for something about Jazz Daddy for you. And then after that, I came down and I was just, I was just going for a walk and I just ended up here. And listen, I'm really sorry if I interrupted. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, we were just talking. I got to get over to the Blue Moon and do some paperwork. Don't you two have to be at the studio or something? No, well, I'm off today. I have field research. Okay. Well, I'll see both of you later, then. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. Bye. What? I was wondering if you had a good time last night. I thought you'd bring that up. 
What do you want? Can I have one thing to say about that? If you ever put me in that position again, you are going to be very sorry. Now, I know you followed us here because you probably thought I was going to tell on you. Well, did you? No, I didn't. Now, I know you don't believe this, but I don't want to come between you and your father. But I know you're confused about that right now. So I'm going to let it slide, okay? This time. But let me make this clear. I don't intend to be intimidated by you. I don't intend to patronize you or any other little thing that I have been doing in the past just to win your approval. Now, the next time you step out of line, any line, I will snatch you back so fast it'll make your head spin. You got it? Instead of being nice, am I brilliant or what? Bridget, I don't know. I think it's more of a problem now. I mean, Jilly has this secret, and she can, she has it hanging over my head. At any point, she can she can go back and tell my father everything. So don't give her the opportunity. But Bridget, you know what I mean. I mean, it's like now I have to I have to deal with her taking up all of my father's time. You know, Kat, I'm trying to understand. I really am. But if my parents didn't have time for me, that would be great then having a boyfriend like Elvis would be no problem. I could do whatever, whenever. Yeah, well, he must be something, then. Well, uh, I mean, I don't mean to be rude to you or anything, but I don't think you have ever met anyone as cool as Elvis is in your whole life. <laughs> You're probably right. So what does he do? I mean, does he have a job or anything? A job? Yeah. Are you kidding? Elvis doesn't believe in having a job. He thinks that jobs are for people who aren't clever enough to figure out how to get out of doing them. <laughs> I agree, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I guess. See, Elvis has a lot better things to be doing with his time. Like what? Like what? Yeah. Like whatever, whenever, whenever the mood hits him. He's an adventurer. Things are never boring with Elvis. He's always very interesting. <laughs> he's, he's like... No one I've ever met before in my life. He's not scared of anything. And he hates being bored. I guess that's why I'm his girlfriend. Well, this must be pretty serious. Yeah, about as serious as you can get. Do you want to know what happened the first time he picked me up? No, I, I don't want to. Cat, I'm not going to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> the first time you picked me up. I was oh, you mean on your first date? Oh, Kat, you are such a geek. Elvis doesn't date. I was hitchhiking home from school, oh. and he pulled up in this hot little red Italian convertible that he had borrowed. <laughs> yeah. It was great on that first day. We went driving like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, the tunes cranked way up. The wind was blowing through my hair. Oh. <laughs> what happened? Tell me more. It was like I knew what it was like to be free. I had no idea where I was going. I didn't care. <laughs> All I knew was my mother wasn't squawking at me every ten minutes to be changing the baby's diaper. My father wasn't sitting in his lounge chair whining about not having a job. You know, I don't have to live my parents' life anymore. I have a choice. Elvis taught me that. We're talking freedom, Kat. Freedom with a capital F. Choices. Oh, Elvis taught me what that felt like. I just, I just felt it that day. Man, I hope he gets here quick. So, what about your summer's resolution? You mean about sleeping with Delilah Lewis? Yeah. You gotta be a realist. Elvis 
stop me that. I mean, what if he gets hung up? What if... What if? The girl's got to have some options. Sorry about that. I had to get to the seamstress before she took another job. Lindy, I want your word. About what? I want you to tell me that you'll lay low. That if anyone comes around asking questions, you know nothing about me that, except that I still work down the hall. Well, that's after you leave Springfield. What about now? What about what about while you're still trying to get away? Don't worry. I'll keep an eye out for you. So will Frank. Here, I want you to take this. What? I want you to take this and take Francesca and go away. Now you don't have to finish your case. Mindy, I can't take your money. Why not? I know how much you love Francesca, and I know you're in danger, and I want to help, and I'm going to cover for you after you leave. I can't thank you enough for what you're trying to do, but I can't take it. I want you to promise me to stop trying to help. Hey, partner, can we talk? Yeah, it's okay. Mindy knows what's going on. All right. Well, then I, uh, I slept up in the office for bugs, and it's clean, at least for right now. I could. It won't be clear for long. Maybe you can help me convince this lady to stay out of it. Well, Mallet, it looks like you're outnumbered. If Frank can help, so can I. You were a good friend to me when I needed it. So you're stuck with me. I'm in. about this, okay? Because I've got something that is going to cheer you up. What? A call card. Where did you get that? What do you mean? My Aunt Maureen gave it to you. She, she said, here, dear, why don't you go buy yourself some new clothes? No way. My mother would never give me a credit card. My mother doesn't have a credit card to give me. <laughs> Come on, let's go shop till we draw. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> take care of so I'll see you tonight okay and make sure you bring along something formal there's a reception at the Met and I want to show you off <laughs> all, right. all right see you then okay isn't he something else and we're going alone no Alex no heart just me and dad yes I know and I know he's enjoying the fact that I really wish you weren't why don't you want me to go because you're not invited you know that isn't it. Darling, I stood outside the door for a while. I didn't want to interrupt your presentation. Oh, what'd you think? I thought you were brilliant. <laughs> and I thought Roger was a rat for not telling you so. He did tell me. Yes, but he isn't going ahead with what you want, is it? He's still fighting going through with phase two of the proposal. I get it. You're here to plead the case for your little boyfriend. If it's Daniel you're talking about, that is not why I'm here. I'm worried about you. Why? Because I'm going to New York with my own dad? Because I don't trust him not to hurt you. Oh, I wish it weren't so important to you. I wish Roger didn't mean so much. Mother, I am sick and tired of you trying to turn me against my own father, so forget about it. Give it up, okay? That is not what I'm trying to do. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. All right, fine, fine, fine. I'll go. I want to talk 
talk to you. Oh, good. I want to talk to you, too. 